Dream Vision 7 Radio Network welcomes Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes, heard every Monday at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Using nearly 200 years of abundant and consistent afterlife evidence, quantum physics, consciousness research, and ancient writings, we seek to understand who and what we are, how reality works, the nature of God, and the meaning and purpose of our lives. Join Roberta weekly to better understand our one reality and gain insights into how we can make the most of the glorious eternal beings that we are. Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Oh, my dear friends, welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes. I'm delighted that you could be with us today, and I think you will be too. One of my favorite places to visit is the Denver area. I have family there, and that's part of it. But there are some wonderful groups of really spiritually aware and curious people in Denver, including a great big IANS chapter. And I have some friends there that I see much too seldom. And wherever I see them, I always say, I'm coming back sooner. On top of it all, there are the Rocky Mountains. Never forget those mountains. If you've never been to Denver and visited those mountains, you cannot imagine how beautiful they are, what a presence they are, and and what a joy it is to live where you can see and be part of mountains that have snow on top. So I love going to Denver, and I often go there in the winter or spring. And our guest today is a lovely young medium I met when I was in the Denver area in March. Serena Baptista lost her seven-year-old son in March of 2007, and she learned almost at once that little TJ wasn't so little, number one, and he had never actually died. He helped his mother to develop her own abilities as a medium, even helped her learn how to train other mediums. And her third book is My View from Heaven, a boy's story of his journey to heaven and the purpose of life on earth. Not too ambitious a title, I have to say, Serena, but she wrote this book with TJ. In fact, it's in his voice. It was channeled. I understand from channeled. We're going to talk about that. This book is really great. Um, What When I'm doing this work, which I've been doing for almost now 50 years, I'm always looking for what's true because the the information I've built is so huge and so consistent, I can pretty quickly tell if something is coming from, you know, another planet. This is all straight on. And what I love about this, as as I loved about Mikey's book, Flying High in Spirit, Mikey died at 20, it doesn't matter because we're all the same age once we get to the afterlife. But what I love about this is that he's teaching me things. TJ is teaching me things. So this is a terrific book. I'm going to recommend it highly to you. Um, And with his mentoring, with his long distance training and all the people he brought in to help his mother learn, Serena has become a very good medium. She actually teaches mediumship and she's she's actually a delightful person. I have to say she's like a ball of energy. Welcome, Serena. I am so glad we finally made this happen. Oh, thank you so much, Roberta, for having me. It is really a pleasure to be here. I just love you to bits, have (laughs) seen you through the years, and am just so grateful to be here. What a wonderful thing to say. All right, let's try. No, let's not talk about me. I almost said, oh, let's talk about me. (laughs) No, I want to talk about you. Tell us about your background. I mean, you were just a a mom, right? What What was your sort of day job before this all started to happen? Well, funny enough, uh, before children, I was actually a software engineer. So very left-brained, very yes. logical, very step-by-step. You know, we needed step-by-step. I actually did document processing for a while, so I was writing out workflows and processes and things like that. And then had children, and it became a uh, stay-at-home mom and was homeschooling my kids. You have two older ch- no younger children. He's the oldest, right? I'm trying to remember from the yes. book. Yes. Okay. So you had him and you had two younger children. And his he he had this peculiar illness. What what was it that actually he died of? Do you know? It actually was just the flu. Oh my. 
Yes. He caught the flu on uh, Sunday evening, as did his sister, his younger sister. Both of them exhibited the same symptoms. But uh, by Friday, uh, his room, and he was gone. Wow. All right. That, you just scared every single parent who's listening to us. It's important to everybody to understand that this was a planned death. Every, we're told every child who dies, every sub-adult who dies, planned to come in and die early. And we can talk about the reasons why in the course of this hour or, or send me an email if you'd like. And we'll talk about it. But th- that seems to be always the case. It certainly was for TJ. And he said he yes. even had tried to leave sooner a couple of times and, and he just couldn't bear it. He was having too much fun, which is the same thing Mikey Morgan said. They, oh, they tend, really? That's they, great. Yes. They tend to take their last exit point because they didn't realize how much fun they'd be having on earth but he really had to go and he sent you away so he could die alone which many people will do and yes. this was this is like the worst thing that could ever happen the biggest nightmare we all have is that somehow our child will die and this happened in a, a way that you would think could never be fatal and yet it was so how did you first begin to understand that he was sending one of the things this little boy did was to make it to remind his mother of him she would send him the scent of his dirty laundry i mean that is so funny i yes. laughed out loud when i read that i mean that what a child it is. he was in the beginning it is really i mean what what a character of all yes. the things to give me you know yes. was the scent of his dirty laundry and forever for for until i figured out that that's what it was and it was a good 6 months later when i was actually t- on the phone with a medium and she said oh, I'm smelling dirty socks. Oh. And that's when I said, oh, my gosh, oh. it's been him all the while. I thought somebody missed a pair of underwear. It was stuck on yeah. the, underneath yeah. the bed or something like that because I would go into his room and I would get this overwhelming fragrance of his dirty laundry. Oh, my <laughs> so. Lord. Just, just, just to insert, people often will send us, but people who have recently gone ahead will often send us fragrances. For the first signs I ever got, I got as a teenager from my grandmother. Um, and, and it was repeatedly, I would smell the smell of her living room, which was kind of like lily, lilies of the valley and lilacs. Um, very distinct oh, wow. smell in her house. But that's a lot prettier than smelling laundry. <laughs> It's like, but so, but you began to realize he was communicating with you, right? You were hearing from him. Yes. Yes. And he would speak through other people as well. And they kept telling me, he's got big plans for you. He says he's got big plans for you. And I would get so frustrated and so angry, wondering what those plans were, first of all. Why did he have to leave to begin with? Yes. And what did this all mean? What was, what was going on here? And when did you first, when did someone first let you know that this was something you and he had planned together? Because this is always a shock for parents when they're, when they hear this from a, so tell us about that. How did you first find that out? There were numerous people in my life who were what I would call connected or intuitive. I really didn't think that I was. Apparently, I am. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that time, wonderful? Yes, yes. <laughs> at the time, I had no idea, so I was relying on other people. And there was a woman who was the mother of a friend of mine. I had met her maybe once or twice. She lived in California. I live in Colorado. And I was, it was just a few days after JT passed, and I said, somebody knows why this happened. Somebody knows. And so I sat at my desk, and I was running my finger down the addresses and the phone numbers of the people we needed to contact and I stopped on her name no idea why obviously I was being being directed to do that and I called her and I said this is Serena why that's all I said and she said go get a paper and pen because (gasps) JT visited me last night and he has a message for you oh my word it's everyone again wow okay this, yeah, this again was days after, days after. So at that point, I I knew there was more to it. But of course, it wasn't until six months after that time that I found that I was a medium. 
this is something that he and his mother planned. This is true also of Mikey Morgan's situation. Um, Carol swears that she never would have signed up for this. But Oh, but, no. <laughs> but it, yes, but right, and you wouldn't have either. Sometimes gifts are always not always wonderful to receive. Some of the best gifts are, are painful to receive, but this is a great gift. From a very advanced being, which is what TJ, uh, JT, turn, I always wanted to call him TJ, JT turned out to be. Um, and it was the gift that he would leave early and then guide his mother through this wonderful journey she's having now as a medium. And he talks about the reasons why in his book, which to me, um, I mean, his book is just extraordinary. I'll talk more about it later. But it's another book like Mikey's book that, that gives you information that, and me too, that we could not get in any other way from a genuine being not in body who is closely attuned with his mother so um all of this is is good and powerful news does this mean if you're you have lost a child this is the plan you had with that child not necessarily but there was a reason there was a plan and it was very wise of serena to right away say i want to find out why this happened and not just poor me or or, or dwell in sorrow or, or make a shrine to her child. I've seen people do all kinds of things. They're alive. They're more alive after they leave their bodies than they were when they were here sitting in a high chair or were sitting at the table. They're much more alive. And it's all good news. And I think that's the first thing one gets from talking with Serena, actually, because uh, she is full of this r- remarkable energy and light, which you usually, usually don't see in people that you don't know fairly well. Um, we have a lot more to talk about today, uh, one of which is channeling. The book is called My View from Heaven, A Boy's Story of His Journey to Heaven and the Purpose of Life on Earth. And this is a channeled work. This is really the third thing you and he did together, but he actually channeled it in his voice. How did this happen, Serena? It was really actually amusing. He came in, I had just published the second book, which is a connecting workbook to help people learn how to connect like I did, because it was a much simpler process than what I thought. That was published in December of 20, was 2012. So January 2013, he comes in and he says, okay, mom, it's time for my book. And when I say he comes in, we just have we have daily conversations. So in our daily conversation, he said, "Okay, mom, it's time for my book." And I said, "Can you can you hang on just a sec? Just got these two books published, you know, back to back. Can we just sit on this for a minute?" And he said, "No, no, yes. we can't." <laughs> so, oh. so I said, "Okay, fine, let's go with this. How do you want to do this?" And he says, "Well, I'm going to tell you what to write. I am clear audience, which means I do hear spirit." So what I did was I had a voice, you know, a speech recognition program and a headset and Word document. And I asked him, okay, what do you want to say here? And I just spoke into the microphone and it translated it onto my computer. It was much easier than trying to type it out because I just, he was talking so fast, I just needed to get it onto paper. And I'm going, I can't do this just typing. So I said, how do I do this? He goes, well, use a headset, mom. (laughs) Well, you know, (laughs) so mad (laughs) <laughs> was he like this when he was with you? Was he was he this bossy when he was with you sometimes? Yes. Yes. He uh, was, you know, he, he was definitely a very what we call, you know, a spirited child. I was reading yes. all the raising your spirited child books, you know, trying to oh, figure really? out how to raise oh, this kid. It. Yeah, that's oh, great. I know. It was he was definitely challenging in that in that regard. Now I understand why, of course, but at the time. <laughs> No, but uh, but it's so, it is. I, I love it. You use the word spirited. I think that's that's great too. So did, did, when he so he spoke it and did it come out as it ended up on the page all you know edited and set or did you go in and play with it and move things around or how did the how did the chapters happen? So he did it all. I just was the. Just, just the uh, person who was, you know, I was like, I, I'm the ghostwriter, I guess. No, I guess he's the ghostwriter, <laughs> yes. which just cracks me up that term. Anyway, the, yeah, it was <laughs> true. That's, that's right. <laughs> so, and we would, I would, I would write it out, or I would 
say it out and it would go into speech recognition. And then I would go back because obviously speech recognition, as we know from voice to text, it likes to mess things up. So I would go back and I would say, okay, is this what you meant to say here? And he would say, yes, that's perfect. Or no, change this word, change this. So he really was the editor as well. Of course, I had another editor who handled the grammar and things like that. Uh, but he was he was the full author on that. When, when um, Mikey Morgan. 